So just a quick word this morning. The readings all of this week are from the Book of the Apocalypse, and they are, as one would expect, very true to their name. They're somewhat apocalyptic. Uh, so it's speaking about the end times and death and judgment. That's well, apocalypse. That's what the, uh, that's what, uh, the end things are. Uh, what happens after we die? So they're, they're, they're serious readings, and they can be quite uncomfortable, which is probably good. Because if we're just sailing away comfortably through life, then we'll never attain sanctity. And never attaining sanctity means never attaining heaven. So it's kind of good that we are pushed to our limits uh, on occasion. When we think of family relationships, one thing which is very sad to see is presumption, right? When you see children who just kind of presume that... uh, Mom and dad will satisfy their every need. I'm getting a PlayStation. I just, I don't care. I already have one at home. I just, I need a second one upstairs, you know. So I'm, I'm just going, my parents better give me that or like, or they don't love me. Uh, or just kind of, when people are demanding, see, you might see the same with a husband and wife, you know. When you see a husband refer to the wife as, you know, she who must be obeyed or the ball and chain or, you know, herself. Uh, and just kind of dismissive uh, terminology, which is... Just well, it's kind of it's 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 sad to see because it just kind of presumes you know, that they'll always be there. It doesn't really matter. Like the, they're not going to go anywhere. And sure, if they did, they probably wouldn't miss them anyway. It's 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 a very dismissive attitude, which is obviously very harmful. It does not show a good relationship at all. So, in all of our lives, kind of instinctively, without really realizing it, without necessarily sitting sitting down and listing them out, all of us have have priorities. And a very easy way to measure what your priorities are is to measure what time you put into them. So if I say, well, yeah, yeah, my, my faith is important to me, right? How much time do you give your faith? Well, if it's, you know, if it's four minutes a week, I would argue probably that your faith might not be important, as important to you as you think. While we like the idea of having faith, the practice of it might not be so... Might not... The practice of it might not actually reveal that it's a high priority at all. We might say family is important to me, we might say the wife is important to me, but if we never actually give them quality time, maybe they're not actually as important as they should be. So when it comes to our faith, when it comes to the most important things, when it comes to these things that we will be judged on, you know, Scripture says it. Like, obviously, God doesn't actually need a physical book of life with all of our vices and virtues written on it in order to, to, to know our hearts. He doesn't need a book, but, but in the book of the Apocalypse, it, it does talk about the book of life being opened, and then we're judged. Okay, that's what it says. If you don't like it, take it up with Scripture. Uh, but in, in, in this judgment, we will be judged according to what our, pri- what our priorities were. And we might, in, again, instinctively think, well, our priorities will always be good, won't they? Again, if we look at what we put our time into, maybe, maybe our priorities are, are well askew. When we look at the amount of time that can be put into hobbies, into career, into even gardening, into TV, into computer games, into YouTube, into Netflix, into just distraction, into entertainment, the quantity of time that we can find in a day to spend in front of a screen, and then we resent the five minutes we have to spend with ourselves. Or, or the two minutes that, we want to, that we're supposed to give God. Or we have all the time in the world to watch as many matches as, uh, as are conceivable on a weekend, but no time for the kids. So it, this can very easily happen. It can very easily happen. Our lives are busy, they're, they're, they're distracting, and, of course, technology makes it so easy to distract ourselves. But today, I think we can ask ourselves honestly, Lord, when, where are you? in my life what priority do I give you and if you're not right up there and to be honest God has to be number one even above family even above our political allegiances even above our reputation God has to be number one am I giving him the time that reflects that or is it just an idea do I give God the first place in my heart if not let us start today 
because one day the chips will be down, the sands of time will have passed, and we'll find ourselves before God. This is what scripture tells us. And on that day, we will not regret a single minute, a single second that we have given God in prayer. So let us redouble our efforts uh, in this month of November, also praying for our dead. Last month was the month of the rosary, so if that's what the Lord is inspiring you to do, to pray either more or start praying the rosary, or pray a decade on the way to work, or pray uh, occasionally, even with your family. Wonderful thing to do. So we ask, good Lord, to renew our faith and that we might make him our first priority. Amen.